Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll talk about the active attacks on the Elgamel. Uh, if you recall, in the previous video, we talked about the passive attacks. That's when um, Eve, which is the attacker, uh, is not interested in uh, changing the, cif the, cif the cipher text, but actually just getting the, the plain text. So in this case, let's talk about a couple of things that Eve can do uh, to attack the Elgamal scheme. So one thing that she can do is uh, uh, could convince Alice that her public keys, P, Alpha, and B, belong to Bob. So what basically means is in this case, Eve will be the one generating the prime, the alpha, and the number B, all these three numbers, and try to convince Alice that that's Bob's private uh, keys, public keys in this case. So Eve could, in, in this case, is impersonating Bob. So basically what that means, if you recall uh, with the Elgamal is, so the Elgamal, uh, the first uh, phase of the Elgamal, uh, Bob is the one who does the setup, which is basically, he's going to publish P, Alpha, and B. P is the prime number, Alpha is the generator, and B is uh, another number that is computed from Alpha, doing a modular exponentiation. Um, so Bob publishes that, uh, whatever places on his website, on on a server, or, or anywhere else. Now, one thing that Eve can do, which is I just what I just mentioned, is that if could impersonate Bob and then just put a P prime, alpha prime, B prime, with the primes here means it's just another number different from P alpha and B. And then so if that happens, then Alice will graph uh, this uh, as thinking that is from Bob. And so she will uh, do the encryption, send the messages, and of course Eve will just get the plain text because she has all the information for decryption. So that would be pretty bad if Eve could do that, if the attacker could impersonate Bob. Now, that problem can be solved if using something called certificates. Uh, and we might talk about this in the class later uh, to this kind of, of topic. And this is basically to avoid this kind of, uh, trying to avoid this kind of uh, impersonation. Of course, uh, security here means is given a better security uh, for this. It doesn't actually mean that certificates will always be 100% uh, uh, secure. So it just adds another level of security So to the uh, Elgamal and other techniques. Now the Elgamal, if you recall uh, what we did with the RSA, uh, the RSA is also malleable. It means that uh, Eve could change actually the the cipher text uh, in a way that uh, when it arrives to to Bob, Bob won't realize that the the plain text has been changed also. And but this happens only for the school book Al Gamal. Now, if you recall, uh, the RSA, the school book RSA, is not actually what is used uh, in reality. You have to use some kind of padding to be able to uh, get rid of this problem that is here. So, but for the school book, which is the one we just saw, uh, that's the problem here. So even, so in this case, Eve can change the cipher text before it's delivered to Bob. So basically the situation, so here in this picture, will be like this. So Alice will send the, uh, the middle key and the cipher text Y, which is uh, what it sent through the channel when you use an encryption by the Elgamal. So Eve will intercept that couple of things before it gets to Bob. So Bob doesn't get this pair of things. So Eve intercepts this and it's gonna change uh, the message in the following way. The ephemeral key is gonna stay the same, but she's gonna multiply the ciphertext by some uh, positive integer S. So in reality, what Eve is doing is just changing basically the ciphertext. And that would be pretty bad, uh, for example, if this was kind of a money transaction, if Y was the amount of money, then Eve could easily change that like twice or um, three times or whatever the number it is she wants to put in there. So she can transform the ciphertext there. So that's basically what I brought down here. So Eve intercepts this, multiplies the ciphertext Y by a positive integer and sends the changed 
uh, ciphertext together with the ephemeral key to Bob. Now the ephemeral key is not changed in this case, there is no need to change it. So when Bob gets that, uh, uh, this one, this message that was changed by Eve, Bob is now going to compute the share key, which is what he has to do to do the decryption. And remember what that is, is you take the ephemeral key to the exponent b, and this is the exponent that Bob computed. This is a random number between 2 and b minus 2. And that's how you compute the share key. And the, the reason he has to do that because that share key is used for decryption. So remember the decryption is you take the cipher text, which in this case is s times y because this was changed by Eve. But Bob doesn't know that. Bob doesn't know that it was changed. So for Bob, this is just y. But in reality, it's s times y because it was changed by Eve. So Bob, what it has to do is, remember what he does is he takes this ciphertext and multiplies by the inverse of k modulo p. So it will say sy times the inverse of k modulo uh, p. Uh, but remember the y here uh, was the uh, ciphertext. Now I can use associativity and just say this is the same as s that multiplies y times k inverse because this was the, ori the, the original uh, ciphertext. Now Bob doesn't know that this is happening. Bob just does the computation. He, he doesn't know that it was changed. And so when you do this, then of course you get the, the plain text x, but you still have the factor of s in there that was introduced by Eve. Bob doesn't know that, but it is there. So Bob receives the modified plain text s times x, which is of course not what Alice intended. Alice intended to send x, but Eve modified the ciphertext in such a way that when Bob receives it, then it's multiplied by s. Now, of course, Bob doesn't know that at this point. So, now the problem of of this malleability here, which is changing in in the final effect, will change the plain text. Um, will be pretty bad here course if you could do that. Now the, this problem is again solved uh, in practice using padding which we will see later in the class. But so this one, this here it happens only for the school book El Gamal. So in reality this is not implemented in real life like this. So there are some couple of steps that have to be taken in order for this to work because it has to be resistant for, for this attack. All right, so that's basically all I have to say about the security of the Elgamal. So this is the last video in that series um, up to this point. So in the next video, we'll talk about our, another interesting facts about applied cryptography. So I'll see you in the next video.